Namaskar my dear students. Today in the dental material section, we will be discussing a very important topic that is dental rot alloys. A separate short note on dental rot alloys is asked in the theory exam. Then the short notes like stainless steel, nickel titanium alloys are also asked in the theory exam from this topic. Many viva questions are asked from this topic. Along with multiple choice questions are also framed from this topic. We will try to cover them all. So let's begin. Alloys in dentistry are used for fabrication of restorations, files, instruments and whatnot. Now these dental alloys can be of two types. First are the casting alloys and second are the rot alloys. The cast alloy is when the, met, the molten alloy, it is poured into a mold and it is given a shape. Okay, this uh, type of alloys are mainly used to fabricate the crown, bridges, inlays, onlays. I have enclosed the video regarding the casting alloy. Second are the wrought alloy. You know, when the metal uh, is worked, drawn or shaped, you know, it is hammered or bent into a shape at a temperature below the recrystallization temperature of a metal, which is often the room temperature. That is called as the wrought alloy. So we will be discussing in detail about the wrought alloys in this video. First, let us understand the uses of these wrought alloys in dentistry. First of all, the dental instruments, you know, various dental instruments, the surgical instruments, the knives, they are also fabricated of the wrought alloys. Second are the prosthodontic class, mainly the combination class uses the wrought alloy. You know, it is often asked in the multiple choice question also. Third, the stainless steel crowns, bands, steel bands for the orthodontic and the periodontic purpose. Then orthodontic wires, night tie, stainless steel wires. Orthodontic brackets also are fabricated of the wrought alloys. Endodontic instruments like the files and the reamers, okay, they are also fabricated of the wrought alloys. Now let us understand the manufacture of wrought alloys in brief, how these wrought alloys are formed. You know, these wrought alloys are usually derived from the cast metal or the alloys. These cast metal or the alloys, they are subjected to various deformative processes like the drawing. Uh, the round wires, they are obtained from this drawing process. Then extruding, machining, beating, rolling. The rolling process is used to form the sheets and the rods. Okay, forging. Forging is a process by which the stainless steel crowns are obtained. Another multiple choice question. Okay, so all these uh, process apply a tremendous amount of stress, which is known as the work hardening, and it results in the manufacture of the wrought alloys. As we just discussed that the deformative process, they convert the cast metal alloys into the wrought metal alloys. And during this deformative process, some atomic deformations and disruptions take place. In this, the first is the dislocation. What is dislocation? That on application of a shear force, the dislocation of atoms occur along a plane, which is called as the slip plane. This is the simplest type of the dislocation. It is also called as the edge dislocation. Second is the twinning. What is twinning? The deformation occur along the either side of a plane in such a way that it mirrors each other. This is a favored uh, disruption uh, as compared to the dislocation. Third is the fracture. You know the continuation of the cold working in a heavily deformed metal it eventually leads to fracture. It is one of the major concern in dentistry. The fracture is mainly initiated from the micro cracks that occurs uh, at the points of the dislocation at the boundaries. Okay. 
Another very important term which we should uh, understand before going further is annealing. What is annealing? You know the effect of the cold working that we have just discussed, like the strain hardening, loss of ductility and distorted grains. It can be reversed by simply heating the metal. And this heating process is called as annealing. This annealing is done at a particular temperature and for a time. Okay, the temperature is usually taken as the half of the melting point of the metal. Okay, now the, the annealing takes place in three stages. First is the recovery stage, second is recrystallization and third is grain growth. Now let us understand the three stages of annealing. We have already uh, discussed that a cold work metal, it contains lot of residual stresses and the purpose of annealing or the heat treatment is to relieve these stresses. So in the first phase, that is the recovery phase, it is very, very beneficial. The maximum stress relief, it occurs during the recovery phase. And as we can see in the picture that there is slight decrease in the tensile strength with no change in the ductility. Okay, so uh, the most beneficial stage is recovery stage. Second is the crystallization. On further heating, what happens? There are changes in the microstructure. Okay, the deformed grains, they begin to recrystallize. The metal, it regains its old soft and ductile conditions. The metal loses its properties of resilience. So the recrystallization stage is avoided. Next is the grains growth. In this phase, the recrystallized grains, they continue to grow with larger grains, okay, uh, continuing in the smaller grains. The grain growth, it, uh, what happens that it leads to a coarse grain structure, okay, and there is no significant difference in the ductility and the tensile strength. So what we conclude from these that the annealing should be done only up to the recovery stage. Okay, as we discussed, this is the most beneficial and relieves maximum stresses because the uncontrolled heating of the dental uh, appliances, they can result in the unintended, undesirable changes within the structure. Now, next we come to the classification of the wrought alloys. The wrought alloys can be of mainly two types, the wrought gold alloys and the wrought base metal alloys. In the wrought base metal alloys, they can be four further alloys. First is the stainless steel. Second is the cobalt chromium nickel. Third is the nickel titanium. And fourth is the beta titanium. So let us discuss them one by one. First are the wrought gold alloys. Wrought gold alloys are just similar to the type 4 casting gold alloys. They have very good mechanical properties like the hardness and the tensile strength. Coming to the uses, they are used for making the clasp in the arpedes, uh, especially the combination clasp. This is one of the multiple choice question. Classification, two types are there. Type 1, high precious metal alloys. Type 2, low precious metal alloys. Coming to the composition, the gold is the main constituent, 25 to 70%, then copper, platinum, nickel, palladium, zinc, and silver. Now, these uh, rod gold alloys have to be considered when we are doing the soldering because prolonged heating at higher temperature can cause the recrystallization and makes the wire brittle. Now before going further, let us understand the basics of the crystal lattice. Uh, you know the crystal structure of a metal is the way the molecules of a substance are arranged or how they are packed or they are fitted together. The pa this pattern of the atoms makes a space lattice. So a space lattice is a combination of the unit uh, cells, how they are arranged. The basic uh, three types of crystal structures are there. First is, the, as we can see in the picture, the first is the uh, BCC, that is the body-centered cubic arrangement. Second is the FCC, which is the face-centered cubic arrangement. And third is the HCC, which is the hexagonal closed pack crystal arrangement. In the BCC, uh, the, may, uh, the, uh, the cubic arrangement has the nine atoms. As we can see in the picture, the main characteristic is that the strength and the difficulty with which they are worked 
when cold. Okay, examples of this form are iron, molybdenum, chromium. Then comes the FCC. Uh, FCC is the face centered cube arrangement and it has 14 atoms. Okay, these type of uh, materials, they are plastic and malleable. For example, uh, iron, aluminium, nickel, copper, platinum. Then comes the HCP, which is the hexagonal closed packed arrangement. It has 17 atoms. And the main characteristics are that they are non-plastic and they must be heated before they can be worked. Examples are cadmium, cobalt, bismuth, magnesium, etc. Now the first base metal rot alloy is stainless steel. You know the steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. In metallurgy, the stainless steel is a special type of steel with a minimum of 10% chromium content by mass. Okay, the stainless steel was introduced by Brearley of Sheffield in England in 1930. It was found that adding 12 to 30% of chromium to the carbon steel, okay, the basic steel, it makes it highly resistant to the tarnish and corrosion. Let us see how. How the chromium works, okay? Now, if the chromium content is less than 11%, what happens? There will be no adherence of the chromium oxide layer and it will lead to rusting of the carbon steel, which was the traditional steel, okay? Now, second, if the chromium content is more than uh, 11%, okay? Then what happens? A passive film of chromium uh, oxide is formed on the steel okay and this steel with chromium is called as the stainless steel one more thing if this chromium content is more than 28 percent more than 30 percent then what happens then chromium carbide is formed okay which embrittles the steel Next, we come to the types of the stainless steel. There are three main types of the stainless steel based upon their crystal structure, the lattice arrangement of the iron. They can be ferritic, martensitic, and austenitic. So let us discuss them uh, one by one. First is the ferritic form of the stainless steel. You know the pure iron at room temperature. It has a body centered cubic that is a BCC structure and is referred to as a ferrite which is stable up to 912 degrees Celsius. Okay now this ferric alloy it has good corrosion resistance at low cost but it has less strength and less hardness. You know this is why it finds less application in the dentistry then they are not hardenable by the heat treatment that is a major drawback because the temperature change it is induces no phase changes in the solid state okay so that is why these steels have numerous industrial uses though they have little application in dentistry Second is the martensitic form of the stainless steel, how it is formed. You know, when the austenite, the face centered cubic structure, it is cooled rapidly, that is, it is quenched. It undergoes a spontaneous diffusion less transformation to a body centered tetragonal, that is, a BCT structure called as martensite. What is a BCT structure? It is similar to the BCC with unequal sides. It also has nine atoms. Okay, now as this is a highly distorted and strained lattice, it results in very hard, strong and brittle alloy. And because of its high hardness and strength, it is mainly used for surgical and cutting instrument. You know, these steels are all magnetic. They have high carbon content of 0.08 to 2%. Due to this high carbon content, what happens? It responds well to the heat treatment, okay, to give the various mechanical strengths such as hardness. But the brittleness also comes. So the brittleness of martensite makes these hardened steels unsuitable for most applications. 
third are the austenitic these are the most commonly used stainless steel in dentistry at temperatures between 912 degrees celsius to 1394 degrees celsius the stable form of the iron is in the face centered cubic structure that is the fcc okay and this is called as austenite they are the most corrosion resistant of the stainless steel the composition of austenite is made the chromium 18% nickel 8% carbon 0.08 to 0.15%. You know, because of the chromium and nickel content in 18.8 form, this is also called as the 18.8 stainless steel. It comes as a separate short note in the theory exam. Now coming to the properties of the austenitic steel, you know this austenitic steel is preferred to the ferritic alloys because of some of the desirable properties which it has. First is the reasonable cost. Second is the greater ductility and the ability to undergo more cold work without breaking. Okay, then third is the substantial strengthening during the cold working. Ability to overcome sensitization. This we will discuss. Uh, then less critical grain growth, then comparative ease in forming. Eighteen eight stainless steel. You know this is separately asked in the theory and MCQs are also framed on the eighteen eight stainless steel. Why it is called as eighteen eight steel? Because of the composition. It has chromium eighteen percent and nickel eight percent. That is why it is called as eighteen eight steel. Okay, the carbon content is point zero eight percent to point one five percent. Then the other uh, metals which are present are titanium, molybdenum, silicon, cobalt, manganese, iron which is 72%. The role of chromium we have just discussed. The role of the nickel. Why the nickel is important? Nickel, it prevents the transformation of austenite to martensite. Okay, on cooling. And such that this austenite form, it becomes stable at the room temperature when it is cooled rapidly. Sensitization, a very important term. Let us understand this. The 18-8 stainless steel, it loses its resistance to corrosion if it is heated between 400 and 900 degrees Celsius, which is often the temperature which is used during the soldering and the welding. What happens at this temperature? You know the carbon atoms they migrate to the grain boundaries and the chromium atoms are also present at the periphery of the grain. There the chromium combines with the carbon and it forms the chromium carbide okay, which is precipitated out and thus its passivating qualities are lost. This decrease in the corrosion resistance is called as sensitization. Stabilization. Now, this is a method to minimize the sensitization. How it is done? In the stabilization, some element is introduced so that it precipitates as a carbide in preference to the chromium. So, titanium we are adding. Titanium is the most commonly added uh, element, which is added approximately six times to the, uh, that of the carbon to the alloy. Okay, now what will happen? The carbon will preferably combine with titanium and form titanium carbide so that the chromium it remains where it is as at its most effective way. Okay, so it will form the chromium oxide layer. So this produces what is called as the stabilized austenitic stainless steel. The second wrought metal, uh, base metal alloys are the cobalt, chromium, nickel alloys. You know, these wrought alloys, they were originally developed for use as watch springs. This was called as LG alloy. The, their properties are excellent. That is why they are used for the orthodontic purposes. Coming to the composition, the cobalt, which is present in 40%, then chromium, nickel, molybdenum, manganese, carbon, beryllium and iron. 
okay now talking about the properties of the cobalt chromium nickel alloys the tarnish and corrosion resistance is excellent the hardness yield strength and the tensile strength they are the same they are the similar as to the 188 stainless steel now next are the nickel titanium alloys these alloys are also called as nitinol okay nitinol is the acronym for the elements from which the material is composed ni for nickel ti for titanium nol for naval ordnance laboratory Nitinol is the name given to a family of intermetallic alloys of nickel and titanium right from the name which have been found to have a unique properties two unique properties it has shape memory and super elasticity shape memory is the property of a wire which allows the wire when deformed okay to remember its shape and return to its original configuration so it will come back to its original configuration okay super elasticity on unloading okay on unloading they return to their original shape before deformation you know because of these two properties what nitai instrument they are used in the preparation of curved root canals when the root canals are curved these files will not permanently deform as it happens with the traditional alloys okay it will come back to its original position now how do these two features how do these two characteristics are taking place this is the result of the phase transformation okay the phase transition which is occurring how at high temperature a stable body centered cubic lattice is present that is the austenitic phase exist on appropriate cooling or on application of the stress this transforms into a close packed hexagonal martensitic lattice which is associated with a volumetric change okay this characteristic of austenite to martensite phase transition results in the two features of clinical significance which are the shape memory and super elasticity uses of nitai alloys two most common uses of nitai alloys first is in orthodontics it is used for the construction of orthodontic arch wire you know what is the arch wire arch wire is a horseshoe shaped wire when it is tied to the brackets it provides sufficient force to move the teeth okay second is in endodontics it is used for fabrication of root canal instruments like the files and the reamers you know these nitai files they are used in the curved root canals so that they are not distorted uh, and broken down as the traditional files okay the other uses of nitai alloys are in the casting for crowns and denture construction then construction of implants then bone plates and orthopedic surgeries and the oral surgery next coming to the properties of the nitai alloys these nitai alloys they are flexible wires with low modulus values and they are used to apply relatively low forces over long period of time okay as they are used in the uh, arch wires then the low modulus coupled with the high yield stress it indicates excellent spring back properties of these alloys the nitinol wires they have limited ductility and they are not easy to bend without fracturing they are not amenable to joining operations like the soldering or the welding the next rot alloy is beta titanium titanium is called as the wonder metal the main popularity of titanium is primarily due to its first good mechanical properties second it has high corrosion resistance and third it has the excellent biocompatibility it is considered as the most biocompatible okay titanium is mainly used for many dental applications and instruments uh, for example in the orthodontic wires then endodontic files and instruments dental implants and the cast restorations
why beta titanium you know the alpha form of the titanium is not used in the orthodontic application since they do not have the spring back properties now what is this alpha and beta form at temperature below 885 degrees celsius the hexagonal closed pack that is the hcp or the alpha lattice is stable whereas the high temperature the metal is in the body centered cubic that is the bcc form which is called as the beta titanium okay the beta titanium is more useful in orthodontics now to retain this beta form what we do the beta form beta titanium it can be stabilized down to the room temperature by the addition of elements like the molybdena okay so uh, this prevents its transformation to the alpha form the composition of the beta titanium is titanium 79% molybdenum 11% zirconium 6% and tin 4% now next coming to the properties of the beta titanium the modulus of elasticity is around 70 gpa and the yield strength is around 860 to 1200 mpa you know the high ratio of the yield strength to the modulus it produces its use in the orthodontic appliances so that is why they can undergo large elastic activations when compared to the stainless steel then the beta titanium it can be highly cold worked so it can be bent into various configuration and it also has formability compared to the austenitic steel welding clinical satisfactory joints they can be made by the electrical resistance welding of the beta titanium coming to the corrosion resistance both forms they have excellent corrosion resistance and environment stability one drawback that heat treatment it can alter its properties so heat treatment of uh, these wires are not recommended So that's all for this topic today. Please like and share you, this video with your friends and your juniors. You can also give your topics in the comment section. I will try to cover them in the next video. Wish you success today and always.